to um, the village of Imlil, which I really think sounds like something out of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like Imlil, we're in Imlil. Um, there's quite a few tourists here. I don't really know what there is to do. I think there's like lots of hiking and walking and there's some sort of waterfall and stuff. Uh, we're really close to the highest peak in North Africa. What's it called again? It begins with a T. It's the highest peak in North Africa. I think it's literally either just in front of us or just behind us. Um, but a lot of the treks are like over an hour and I really don't think we're going to be walking for that long. So I think we're just going to maybe explore the village a little bit and see what's here. We're just going to have some lunch now. Mm. So, what time is it? I think it's time for the Muslim people to pray. Damn right it is. Like, I think it's really cool that you can hear it from every mosque. <coughs> like, when we were... Excuse, excuse me? <laughs> when we were on the camels, that like, you could hear it behind us, in front of us, and to the side. I think that's really cool that the whole area like calls everyone to prayer, but just the noise that they use. I'm sure they're shouting lovely stuff in Arabic, but to me it literally sounds like, like an olden days like war cry. The Nazgul's are coming. The Nazgul's are coming. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the valley of Imlil and the Nazgul's are coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. It would be perfect if we see like a black horse now come past. With the, somebody on it. Okay, but I'm still eating. And I want to film this cutest kitty because he has been lying there for 20 minutes. He's really fluffy. So fluffy. Fluffy kitty. <laughs> Do you want to look around? 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 Uh, tell me. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Well, I'll start over. Two. <laughs> <laughs> you want to look around the um, beautiful restaurant garden? that we got invited to eat in. Oh yes. It's just so beautiful and luscious. Mm, look at this beauty. I mean, if you're in the market for a carpet. Look at all these carpets, boy. Hello, little mountain kitty. Hello. I'm gonna feed him some meat. Yeah. Well, Let's just say that the cat ate well. I ate well as well. You ate well, but I feel like you're going to pay for it tomorrow. Oh, I'm definitely going to pay for it tomorrow. But but today, right? Start for DM or something. I, I <laughs> ate a lot of bread. <laughs> I ate the bread. See? Okay, so apparently there's a waterfall. We're off to try and find it. Well, the apples on the apple trees. So we uh, completely failed to find the waterfall. Oh, Either we, it we was... We found it. We know where it is, but it's quite a long walk. Yeah. I um, fancy climbing a mountain today. Uh, so we're back in the car and we're just going to drive a little bit further up through the village just to see what else there is and just keep exploring, I think.
uh, we just kind of did a drive up and then down. Honestly, there wasn't really that much to see or do. I think it's all just like nature and treks and stuff around here. Um, but Paul's definitely not wearing the right shoes to go for a long trek. So we've decided to start driving down because it is going to be about a two hour drive to get back. But we just stopped at this gorgeous little river. Like it's so weird, the landscape changes so much. Like I mean with the mountains over here, um, the highest mountain in North Africa is the one just by... <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> it's trying not to disturb the vlog. Uh, the highest peak in North Africa is just behind there. Uh, the one that I think I had it in a video a couple of clips back where it's all it's already snowing up there now um, but this little river down here it looks like something out of I don't know like an Enid Blyton novel fairy tale thing but you would never expect it to be in Morocco it's it's just so green um, but yeah it's really pretty very surprising it is crazy the temperature difference just coming down there well I guess he was a local he was going very fast it was a nice little reprieve from the heat of the desert going up there. I mean, the last few days it's been 40 degrees. Um, so it was nice to go up there and it was like a cool 20, 22 degrees or something like that. Oh well, back to the desert. I found some random horses. I just, I don't think we're going to ride them, but I just want to go see them. It's here. Hey ponies. Oh, you look like you're pissed off with that bit in your mouth. Have fun! Oh yeah, it was a good idea that I did it by myself. I'm not with you. I think you would have been terrified. But it was really fun. Yeah, he took us like behind the mountain, uh, showed me a little bit of like a, an old ruined village. Um, and we did gallop along the river, uh, but it was, I mean, it wasn't as rocky as at the front, but there were still a lot of rocks. So, like I just said to Paul, I'm so happy he wasn't with me because even if you, if you, if you ride horses, you know what I mean, but like when a horse starts galloping, sometimes it doesn't know where its feet are. And it's kind of your job to keep the horse upright and keep steering. So, yeah. On that rocky terrain, I was worried. I was like trying to find an area where my horse wasn't going to trip up. Um, but he did good. His name was Samurai and he was a very, very sweet horse. And I think he was happy to have someone on his back who actually knows how to ride. But um, I've burned my legs on the saddle because it's not a proper saddle. I was sitting on it literally dreaming of a nice, soft, supple English leather saddle. Like, oh my God. But they need to introduce them here because that piece of cloth held together with nylon ropes is doing nothing for me which means it's doing nothing for the horse either but I saw that on his horse he had like a, a cream underneath the saddle to stop it from rubbing like when he was when um, he was moving you could see it kind of going up and down I think it's probably very similar to like the grease that you use for like um, eventing horses to help them uh, on their legs to help them slide over jumps and stuff but where the nylon ropes were attached to the stirrups because I'm wearing shorts and if any of you ride horses, you're gonna know the problem. My calves are on fire because I have rope burn on my calves. I will show you now. Ow! The other side isn't as bad, but it's still there. Ow! Yeah, and to, in order to clean it, I had some uh, hand, hand disinfectant. What, what do you call it? Like hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer uh, in my bag. So I just kind of bit the bullet and rubbed hand sanitizer on it to disinfect it and oh my god that stung like a motherfucker. Paul had a nice good laugh at it didn't you love? Yeah. Yeah you thought it was funny. That's, that's what you should do. Should oh but it hurt. Yeah. But anyway.
Jamie. We're heading back to Marrakesh now. So we just got back to the hotel and got changed and ready for dinner. We were both starving because we didn't really eat very much for lunch. I think the cat ate, well the cat definitely ate more than I did. Uh, so we've come out to a sushi restaurant because neither of us really felt like eating Moroccan food tonight because we both had kind of dodgy tummies today. So we're gonna have, Paul's having sushi and I'm having noodles. So we're at Katsura, which is in Gibbies. I don't know why I'm waiting for my chopsticks around because I'm probably not going to use them. But yeah, we're going to have something to eat now.